In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be covering the five classes of Elden Ring, or more specifically, of the closed network test. We aren't entirely certain if these are finalized and going to make it into the game or not, but there are going to be 10 classes at launch, so you can look forward to that. If you're going to be playing the closed network test this Friday or over the weekend, you really want to watch this video and figure out just exactly what class you want to play, because it does have a huge impact on the way Elden Ring plays. The last thing you want to do is start playing the game and realize, oh, I want to be a sorcerer, but I don't have a staff and I don't know where to get one. So now you're searching all over the place, but you can't get one by the time you get one. You're already mostly through the demo, and then you've played the whole demo as something that you didn't want to be. So watch this video, figure out what class you want to play. And if you can't make it into the network test this weekend, maybe you just want to see how the classes play, then this video is definitely for you as well. So first up is the warrior class. This is the class with the most dexterity out of all the five classes. Um, and you start with two scimitars, so you're going to be dual wielding, and you can attack with one scimitar by using R1, or you can attack with both at the same time using L1. The skill on these scimitars is actually not the default skill. The, the skill on them is actually called Stormblade, which shoots a projectile out. You've probably seen this in the gameplay reveal. Um, it actually works really well with this character because uh, this character lacks range. Unless you go ahead and get yourself a bow, which you probably should because this class is more suited towards it than any other class as a backup weapon, um, you're going to be using Stormblade to range down enemies when they're coming at you in groups. So you're not charging in there trying to, you know, take out one while three others are trying to gank you. As I mentioned, because of the high dexterity, uh, a bow works really well in this class. Bows usually have typically dexterity scaling, so using a bow with this class is not a bad idea, and out of all the classes, it's probably most suited towards it. The downside to this class is that because you're using dual weapons, uh, you don't have no way to parry or block attacks, so you're really relying on dodge and ranging things down, either with Stormblade or with using a bow if you pick one up. So you're you have to be a little bit more careful. Like, you can't just go into combat and just sit in there and hold block and then, you know, wait for the right moment and attack. You're going to have to be very quick, get in and out of combat fast, maybe play a little bit more stealthy. So it's kind of an advanced combat style. I would not recommend this class for a new player or someone who's never played Elden Ring before, unless you are, like, a Souls veteran. Otherwise, you might have a really tough time. Additionally, if you are playing the class and you're finding that you are having a tough time and you don't, you know, want to switch classes, I would recommend picking up the Leather Shield from one of the merchants. Um, in order to give you a shield that blocks, it's got 95% physical resistance, which isn't quite 100, but the only other shield in the game that has better physical resistance is only available to the Enchanted Knight, so you won't be able to get that if you're playing this class. But that can help you, you know, learn the ropes of the class before maybe you get a little bit uh, more into it and start switching up going into dual wielding. But really the strength of the class is the dual wield, the ability to crank out damage quickly with those dual attacks. And one of the really great things about Elden Ring 2 is that the fact that they have summoning spirits they, you know, you can use these summoning spirits to distract enemies so you can get in behind them and just hack away at them while they're hacking at something else, um, which really boosts your performance of this class. Moving along to the Enchanted Knight, the Enchanted Knight has the highest intelligence of any class. It is the mage class of sorts in the demo. It's the only class that begins the game with a staff. So until you finish the network demo or the network test, until you get all the way through it, you're not actually going to be able to use any other class and cast sorceries. So if you plan to play as a sorcerer through the demo, you're going to want to select this class. Additionally, it has very good strength, so it's very good with melee weapons as well, and it can use heavier armor because strength now affects equip load. So it's kind of a tanky sorcerer class, and it has a really good shield that's not available to any other classes that I have not found any other place in the demo um, that has 100% physical damage mitigation when you block. That's the only one I've found in the network test that has this. So if you like blocking, even if you don't want to play as a mage and you kind of want to be a tanky character, this is not a bad pick for you. You can always use, um, you know, weapon upgrades to make your weapon into like a magic variant that scales off, you know, strength and intelligence in order to deal more damage, even if you plan not to use spells. So this is definitely a good way to play, even if you don't want to be a mage. Magic is just absolutely busted in this game. It's so strong. It's maybe not Demon Souls strong, but it's really, really strong in this game. And the game really rewards ranged combat, particularly when you're on horseback and it's really hard to hit anything melee. This class probably outperforms any other class on horseback, unless you're talking about just bunches of enemies together, where maybe an AoE spell would be better. There is a Sorceries Trainer for this class, and knowing where that Sorceries Trainer is can make your playthrough a lot more enjoyable, because you can go pick up a lot of spells really quickly for this class, so that you have more things in your repertoire to use. I won't reveal the location of that in this video to avoid spoilers, but if you want to know the location of that, you can check out our other videos, or you can check it out on the wiki because it's listed there. Another important tip is to make sure to upgrade your staff with Smithing Stone Shards, which are effectively the new Titanite, as this will increase the scaling of your staff, improving the damage of your spells. The next class is the Prophet. This is a faith-based class, meaning that they're going to use incantations. 
These are effectively the new miracles that scale off faith. And they're going to be casting these all throughout the game. They have defensive buffs or offensive ones. And the Prophet comes with perhaps one of the strongest spells in the game, if not the strongest incantation. It's very, very strong in the network test, meaning not the full game, obviously. Um, and it's called Beast Claw. And it kind of, you know, sends out a ground tremor in an AoE in front of you that can hit multiple targets, and it hits like a truck. So this is very, very good for dealing with packs of enemies at once, which you do quite often in this game. And it's very, very strong against bosses as well. This incantation, Beast Claw, is not available to the other classes until they've completed the demo. So if you want to use that really strong spell, you really like that spell, but maybe you want to play the champion, which is the only other class that can use incantations, uh, you won't be able to get that until you've completed the demo. So that's kind of the you know, reason to play this class, is if you want to play a faith-based class that has access to that from the beginning of the game, that's really probably the biggest reason to play it. Otherwise, you could go with the champion and get it later. Unlike the Elite Knight, though, there is no trainer for incantations in the network test, or at least there's none that I've found. So these are kind of scattered all across the landscape, and it's going to take you a bit longer to accumulate them than it will on the Enchanted Knight if you just head to the vendor and buy them all. Additionally, they have very high mind, which actually increases your FP, meaning they're going to be able to cast a lot more spells than probably the average class before they run out of FP. So this is also very good. One note about Beast Claw, though, which is probably one of the weaknesses of this class. There are, of course, other incantations you can use, and some of them are very strong. But Beast Claw cannot be used in water. For whatever reason, that spell does not work in water. It just kind of fizzles out and does nothing. And you fight in water quite a bit during the network test. So be mindful of that. Whenever you're trying to fight an enemy in water, try and pull them out of the water and fight them on the land if you can, and you'll have more success. The next class is the Champion. This is another faith-based class that uses incantations. And it actually has a unique one to it that I cannot find anywhere else in the network test called Dragonfire. A giant head of a dragon kind of pops up from you and breathes fire in a huge cone in front of you. And it actually goes really, really far to the point like you'd actually would not believe how far it goes. And you can absolutely destroy just groups of enemies or even bosses or strong enemies from very far away from a safe distance. And what's really crazy about that spell is that you can hold down the cast button and it just keeps cranking fire out. So you can just drain your entire FP pool holding it down until an enemy is absolutely annihilated. You may want to consider increasing your mind with this class because it has rather low mind, meaning it has a smaller FP pool. If you crank that up a bit, you'll be able to hold that button down longer and you can absolutely just nuke enemies. What I really love about this class too is that the spell Dragonfire is fantastic on horseback. You can just ride up to like, you know, entourages sauntering around and just get into the back of them and AoE and take out like six, eight guys at once. Really, really strong spell, especially for dealing with multiple enemies. It can use the Beast Claw spell as well, as I mentioned, but it won't have access to it until completing the demo. You can keep playing after you complete the demo, so don't worry about that. But you'll probably have done quite a bit of content before you get this spell, so you're going to be relying on other incantations until you gain that one. Additionally, the Sacred Seal that they have, which is the item that allows them to use incantations, has better faith scaling than the counterpart that the Prophet has. So theoretically, you should do more damage with your spells than the Prophet over time, assuming you upgrade... Uh, your Sacred Seal, and keep increasing your faith. Champions can also melee rather well because they have strength, a uh, decent amount of it, and they can wear heavier armors because of that as well. So if you increase strength just a little bit, you're going to be able to wear heavier armors and still mid-roll. So you get a nice balance between offensive and defensive spells, as well as heavy armor and attack. The last class is the Bloody Wolf. The Bloody Wolf is probably the most similar to something you would see in a Souls game in terms of its combat style. It's wearing like medium-ish heavy armor, it's got a great sword, it's got a mid-roll, and it's rolling around, and it's just thumping things in the face with its great sword, uh, or parrying things with its parry shield, and absolutely destroying it with repost. Um, and it doesn't use, like, magic or anything like that, so it's just kind of a straightforward warrior that you might see in a Souls game. What's really kind of unique about Elden Ring, again, is that strength increases your equip load in this game, unlike those games. So as you increase your damage with your weapon, you're actually increasing your equip weight, allowing you to wear heavier armor and gaining more protection, while being able to, you know, mid-roll and keep that mobility that you really want, so you don't have to fat roll and gain protection with this class. This allows you to be really tanky, and it allows you to sit there and trade blows with your enemies while you're wearing the heaviest armor in the network test, and you're dealing out pretty damn good damage with your greatsword. Frankly, I don't think there's a melee class that deals more damage than the Bloody Wolf, and they have absolutely buttloads of health too, so they're very, very tough to kill. If you want to play a really tanky melee class that deals good damage, then Bloody Wolf is definitely the one for you. It's good in PvP as well but it's terrible in mounted combat because mounted combat is just very, very difficult for melee characters. So you should either try and avoid melee combat when you're mounted if possible or try and keep it to a minimum if you can. 
That's all we've got for our classes video for the network test. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped inform you a bit so you can make a good decision about what you want to play. What do you guys think of the classes? Which one are you going to be playing? Let us know in the comments below.